Hey everyone, Matthew here from Red Flyer Coding, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys episode number one of my new tutorial series, and we're going to be doing a platformer game. I'm making this series because my first videos on this channel were a Java platformer game, and they've actually done really well now. They've gotten a lot of views. I don't know why the YouTube algorithm is pushing them now, but everyone's asking me to continue that series, but JavaScript is much better than Java, so we're going to restart it and actually continue it in JavaScript instead. So if you're coming here from that series, it'll be mostly the same thing, but JavaScript is still quite different um, in the setup. But once we actually get going, it's not, not too different. So if you don't have any JavaScript knowledge, uh, you should be able to follow this just fine. This is what we're going to make today. So if you already know how to draw a canvas, you could can skip this video, but we're going to be creating an HTML page. This is my solution code. Um, we're going to be creating a canvas, centering it, and actually drawing on it with white. We made this white rectangle right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open VS Code. I'm using VS Code because it's the best code editor in my opinion, at least for using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But if you want to use your own editor, that's okay. It doesn't have to be VS Code. But we're going to navigate to an empty folder. I have my platformer tutorial folder right here. Um, file, open folder, and navigate to an empty folder anywhere on your computer. Mine is in my games folder on my D drive. And we're going to start by creating a new file. So I'm going to right click, new file, index.html. Just like that. And the handy trick that you could do with JavaScript is you can actually do an exclamation mark and press enter and it's going to fill in a bunch of stuff for you. Um, really quick, we're going to get rid of this meta tag because we don't need that for the purpose of this tutorial. But you could also type this manually if you like to type it manually. But we're just telling the document doc type is HTML. The language is English. Uh, we're using the standard UTF-8 char set just for some of the characters and things like that. Um, the title of our document is actually what's going to show at the top um, where the Chrome tab is. So if I right click this and open in default browser, I believe that's an extension for VS Code. So if you don't have that, you can also just navigate to uh, your file. This is where it's stored on my D drive, my games folder, platform and tutorial. This uh, percent of 20 is just because there's a space there. Um, the other thing you can do is open your file explorer and navigate to that folder and then right click and open with Chrome. But it's open in my browser now, um, as you guys can see. And right now it says document, because that is our title right here. So we're going to change this to platformer tutorial. And then we're going to control S to save. Every time I save, I just use control S. But you could also file save over here if you like. Uh, make sure you save it, because you're not going to see any changes. And then when you go back here, you also need to refresh the page by clicking this or control R. And then you'll see your changes. So platformer tutorial is now the title of the tab right over here. This is our solution code. This is the one that we'll be referencing for all of these episodes. I'm going to add the solution code and then add on the tutorial while I'm filming. And I do that just to make sure I don't like make a bunch of errors uh, while I'm making it. It makes the videos much more concise and uh, relevant. So here we are in our tutorial. We're going to add a few things. Um, we're not going to worry about anything else to the head right now in this episode. Well, we will add a bit actually. We're going to add, uh, we're going to link our style sheet first of all. So I'm going to type link and then enter and VS Code auto fills it for you. Or you can type all of this if you'd like. Um, this just tells it that it's a style sheet and then the href is like the reference to the link. We're going to say styles.css. And this is a relative link. So this is going to try and find the styles.css uh, file that is within the same folder as our index.html file. So we're going to right click new file styles.css. You could also type this out by saying like D drive games, platformer tutorial styles CSS, but that would just be redundant because again, you could just use a relative link. And then this means if we moved this game to a different folder, it would still work. So we're going to want to use relative game or relative links for most of this or for everything that we link for the most part. And we're going to save this and we're actually going to add a few more things before we do anything else. So within our body, we're going to do our proper spacing. So we're going to tab in and then we're going to make a H1 element, a header one element. And we're going to say platform and tutorial, but you could title it whatever you'd like. That's just the title that I want because I have platformer solution code here. So I'm going to make this one platformer tutorial so we can definitely see the difference between the two. And then we're going to create a canvas. So this canvas is actually what we'll be drawing on for the duration of our game. Um, you can think of it as kind of like the screen that the game will be displayed on uh, within our web page. And we're actually going to add a few things to this canvas. The first thing is we're going to say width is equal to 1280, height is equal to 720. And of course you could make these whatever you wanted to. 
Um, I like 1280 by 720 just because it's kind of, it's a standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is kind of nice to look at in my opinion. That's what most screens are uh, ratioed, I guess. Um, and it's just a good size, I think, that it's big enough that you can have some detail, but not too big that it maybe won't fit some screens. 1280 by 720 should be fitting um, all computer screens. Mobile's a different story, but it should be fitting all computer screens. So that's that's a good choice, in my opinion. And then we're gonna say ID is equal to game canvas. And that's just gonna allow us to access the canvas from our JavaScript code that I guess we will be starting in this video. Um, it'll allow us to actually pick out the canvas. You don't need to use an ID, but we're gonna do that just for simplicity's sake. And I think that's it. We need to add one more thing to our HTML file. Underneath our link for a CSS file here, we're gonna add a script. So I'm gonna type script enter, and it'll autofill that for us. And then not within the open tag and the close tag, it's actually gonna be just within the open tag. So not in the middle of the two uh, arrows. It's gonna be right here. We're gonna say source SRC is equal to index.js and then make sure you have that closed parentheses um, I believe you could use single parentheses for HTML if you wanted but I always just use double I just think they look better and it's what I'm used to at this point but I think that's gonna be everything for HTML file that looks pretty good so I'm gonna save that now within our styles that CSS we're gonna do a few things um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna say canvas and then we're gonna do an open bracket close bracket and enter and then we're gonna say border one pixel solid black like that yep that looks good I just remembered I actually have a solution code that I haven't even been looking at I don't really need it for this tutorial it's pretty simple but we're gonna save this and now if we go back to our browser here and we refresh our page we can see platformer tutorial is added and now we have a border so we can actually see where our canvas is which is really helpful um, just so we can actually see where we're drawing and everything. I like having that little border and it makes it look nice, but this is off centered. It's all aligned to the left, which I'm not really a fan of. I like it being centered. So we're going to go up here and we're going to say body text align center. And we're going to save it and go back here and refresh the page. And that's going to center everything. It's going to center the text and also the canvas. Um, I know it's a little misleading because it said text align. But it centers everything, even though the canvas isn't technically text. And then one more thing is we're actually going to change the background color. I don't really like white. Um, it's just, it's very jarring on your eyes and very bright. Um, so we're actually going to change that. I guess I'll put it down here. We're going to say background color is gray. Just like that. So now if we refresh the page, you can see that it's gray. It's much easier on your eyes. And now the last thing that we're going to do in this tutorial is we're actually going to draw inside of our canvas. You can see that we're almost here. We have platformer solution code, platformer tutorial, but this one is white inside the canvas. And we're actually not going to be using CSS to just set the background color because we want to be able to draw on our canvas. So we need to use our JavaScript file that we linked right here. Right now this file does not exist. So we need to right click new file and actually oh, we'll do that later. We're, I was going to say we would make a JavaScript folder, but we'll do that in the next video. So we'll say index.js right here. And then we're gonna have a function. Let me pull up my solution code just so I can make sure we're doing everything. We're gonna have a function called window.onload is equal to function. And what this will do, let's add a comment here with two backslashes. This comment will not actually be running any code. It's just for us to understand it better. You guys don't need to add all the comments, but if you'd like to follow along perfectly, then you can add them just to help yourself learn. Um, this is gonna run runs once page has loaded and the reason for this is that we're actually going to be accessing that canvas element that we gave an id over here and you can see that html is kind of weird the way everything runs it's not really like this then this then this it's kind of an odd order but we just in any case we don't want this script running before the canvas is actually created because that'll throw us an error so we're going to create some variables up here whoops didn't mean to click that arrow before we actually have window onload, we're going to create some variables. So create drawing variables. The first one is going to be canvas. And the second one is going to be context. You could type it out all the way, but I'm just going to do CTX like that, just as an abbreviation. Makes it a little bit shorter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say assign canvas and context variables. So we're going to say canvas is equal to 
document dot get element by ID game canvas. And this was that ID that we created in our HTML file right over here. ID is equal to game canvas. So this is going to refer to whichever element has that game canvas ID. And we're going to sign or we're going to sign canvas to that element, not document canvas. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say CTX is equal to canvas dot get context 2D. I believe that's right. Yep, it didn't want to autofill for some reason. Yep, that looks right. Okay, context is equal to canvas dot get context 2D. And you can think of the context as almost like the brush. And what this is saying is it's telling the brush to draw on this specific canvas that we just referenced right here. Um, that's probably the best way to think of it, in my opinion. And then we're going to use the, can uh, the context to draw everything. So what we can say is ctx dot fill style is equal to red and this is just kind of an explanation so you can skip this code don't copy it down yet um, but the fill style is changing like the color of the brush so we're gonna say that now it's red and then we can say ctx dot fill rect and then we have four different parameters here we have the X the Y the width and the height so let's say the X is 10 the Y is 10 the width is 50 and the height is 50 it should make a square. I'm going to save this and go back to Chrome and it should be making a square right about here. This big ish. Let's refresh the page. There we are. It was actually a little higher than I thought. Um, and the way that the canvas coordinate system works is this is zero zero up here. And then as the X values increase, it goes this way. And as the Y values increase, it goes down. It's kind of counterintuitive. I wish it was down here and the Y values went up, but you know, this is how it works. Um, so once you get used to it, it's not too bad. Um, but this is drawing our square right here. So that's how we draw on our canvas. Um, as you guys can see with our solution code, though, we're just going to draw a white background for now. Um, and then we'll actually end up redrawing that white background every frame to clear all of our previous drawings. So what we're going to say is fill style is actually going to be equal to white. And then we're going to say zero, zero. And we could like pull from canvas dot width, canvas dot height, stuff like that. I think there's a dot style in there, but accessing the width and height of the canvas, but we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to say 1280 and 720 because we know that's the width and height of our canvas as of right now. And then fill style is equal to white. Why don't we add a comment, draw on the canvas. So now we're going to control save and we're going to go back to our browser here and we're going to refresh the page. And that is it for this tutorial. Um, you can see that we're drawing on our canvas. We have no errors or anything. So everything's working fine and we've caught back up to our solution code. So now I'm going to go ahead and actually work in the solution code to add probably a player and some movement for the next tutorial and I'll make that one soon. So this was episode one of our platformer game dev tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like down below and comment what you want to see in the rest of this tutorial or future videos because I'm going to try and not get too far ahead of the videos. Um, I'm only going to add things to our solution code like one video at a time and then I'm gonna record the video before I add anything else because I'm hoping that you guys can drop some comments of things that you want to see in this series and then I can actually implement them into the game so if you want to see like uh, power-ups that you can pick up to change the character we can do that or if you want to see like I think I think we're gonna do side scrolling but side scrolling we can do that or like double jump abilities we can do that things like that that you guys want us to implement um, and we'll be able to make those changes based on comments so definitely comment down below uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one